रोल ऑफ महात्मा गांधी इज रियली इम्पॉर्टेंट इन ब्रिंगिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सेल्फ सफिशियंसी सो एज वी सो इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर कॉलोनियलिज्म स्टार्टेड लॉट ऑफ इंडियाज कॉटन वॉज एक्सपोर्टेड नाउ ब्रिटेन वॉज टेकिंग इंडियाज कॉटन इन अ ग्रेट डील वेन सिविल वॉर इन अमेरिका वॉज देयर बट लेटर वेन सिविल वॉर एंडेड ब्रिटेन शिफ्टेड बैक टू अमेरिकन कॉटन द रीजन बींग द स्टीपल्स वर लॉन्ग and more uh, strong and the second important reason was uh, the cotton there was grown in the plantations which was run by unpaid slaves and that was one of the reasons that uh, cheaper cotton could be brought for the factories in britain but india during that time when there was civil war in america flourished well with the cotton production but later on the india's demand for cotton again decreased and definitely there was a inflow of the finished cotton clothes in india so at that time mahatma gandhi brought this concept of self sufficiency and he single handedly wanted to protect india from uh, the economic dependence as well as to bring a political freedom in a country as a result he asked people in the villages to weave their own clothes and not wear the cloth being manufactured by the britishers and this would be a non violent symbol of self reliance and independence that was asserted so how this was non violent uh, gandhi ji believed that industrialization would bring in mass production so there were there would be a endless production of com uh, commodity now when there would be a endless production of commodities that would be there this would lead to greed it would also lead to higher amount of competition now when higher competition would be there it would create violence and war in order to avoid all these violence war and competition we would go for non violence or the concept of swaraj or we our own clothes the future of india lies in the villages and that was what mahatma gandhi was forecasting he believed in the concept of self sufficiency and reciprocity he also said we don't have to become a india which is a english india if that turns out to true then hindustan would become english than that is what he propounded and therefore to keep away ourselves from the western society from the endless production the greed it's important that we maintain the concept of swaraj and then only we can be a nation without a english rule so not a nation of english rule without a english man that is something that we won't want ourselves to be so in his writings in his message he clearly said that the philosophy is each and every village should be self contained and everyone should work on the charkha now everyone could should work on the charkha that is a idea to bring in control and regulate one's own life to reduce any kind of power inequalities and increase the status of an individual in the society because a self woven or a self um, spin cloth would actually give you a pleasure that would hold yourself on a better position so he strongly believed that spinning and weaving could be one of the ways and should be an integral part of india's handicraft for the common people every day for at least one hour or some time people must spin so there was a universalization of khadi that was brought and this could be brought when we are depending less on the mills less on the industries and then only our people could get employment opportunity so spend time with charkha every day now charkha is the center of our flag and it binds all the three colors that means the yarn that is spun by the charkha consider is considered as a cementing force which actually binds the three colors of the nation and it is considered as one of the very strong weapon to remove britishers from india not just from india physically but from the mindset of indians that is required so in 1921 when he toured south uh, india at that time he started to feel that i should wear a khadi dhoti and that was the time he changed his appearance altogether and then 
he said that i strongly oppose the consumerist culture and so do all the nationalist must and this was to fight the bad effects of industrialization which are percolating in our civilization so he said this um, civilization which is there is a vicious circle how english people would buy the indian cotton now once they buy the indian cotton this cotton would be shipped to the britain after days and 100% profit would be accruing to the freightman so nothing would go to the common people now this cloth would turn into uh, this cotton would turn into a cloth in lancashire and then you would be paying the huge wages to bring that cloth back to india and everything from your wages profits that the common will common common man is giving the kings or the uh, the the subedars during that time would go to the britishers and the cloth would finally when it is being sold to the kings or the landlords the money which is brought the profits that is accrued would again go to the britishers so it's a vicious circle we would enter into a circle of poverty enriched by further poverty and further poverty and that's what he explained that if we want ourselves to get out of it the only way is to stop consuming the british cloth and therefore he propounded the idea of self sufficient village the idea was to grow the food crops yourself to spin the cotton to work on charkha to actually exclude money crops for example charas ganja tobacco opium should not be part of the cultivation which is done in the villages water works should be maintained by the common people clean water supply is important so at that time there were numerous diseases of cholera jaundice widespread and therefore he focused on hygiene and health as one of the important aspects education must be very important and compulsory and should be conducted on a cooperative basis as far as possible and this was his vision for a self reliant nation when the villages of the nation turn out to be self reliant the nation would automatically turn to be self reliant so this was a lecture where we focused on gandhian philosophy and his idea on self reliance and reciprocity uh, so i hope you enjoyed the lecture we'll be covering further topics of class 12th ncert heritage craft in the upcoming lectures stay tuned